Hello. Today's guest is a wonderful musician, amazing singer and songwriter, and band leader based out of Nashville. Her name is Lauren Anderson. A few weeks ago, we had the chance to sit down and have a conversation about what it means to be a modern band leader and singer-songwriter, and the artistic as well as practical aspects of making all that work. But before we get to that, please remember to hit that like button, leave a comment if you have any thoughts, and subscribe to my channel. And if you like my content generally, please consider visiting my Patreon page. Welcome to Music in Mind. Music in Mind. Hello. So this is Lauren Anderson. She is a musician, singer, songwriter, band leader based out of Nashville. Yeah. Right? And uh, I met Lauren uh, probably a couple of years ago mm -hmm. through uh, her brother, who's a good friend of mine, Eric Anderson. Mm -hmm. uh, we went to music school together at the University of Wisconsin Madison. And uh, Lauren and I actually got to play on a concert that mm -hmm. Lauren hosts every year in Chicago. Wow. Well, yeah. Yeah. It's. Um... I guess an annual Christmas show that's now me and my brother's um, show. But yeah, so, and you played on the very first one, which is cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't realize that was yeah, the first one. Yeah, okay. the first one, yeah. 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 Sweet. Um, cool, so you guys are doing that again this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's now become an annual thing. Cool, yeah. and uh, that's happening tonight, which the podcast won't be yeah. released in time. But, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, check it out next year. Yeah. Yeah, what do you, does it have a name? Uh, we've been calling it the Anderson Holiday Jamboree. Uh -huh. um, and every year it supports like a different, um, I guess, fundraiser. This year it's Ascend th um, Together. Last year it was uh, Guitars Over Guns. And so it just, okay. just depends. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's that's good great. Good time. Um, so did you study music in school? I, yeah, I did. I um, have a you know really functional undergrad degree in opera. <laughs> oh great! Okay, yeah, yeah so that's sort of singing. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, and then I went to um, grad school for music therapy at the University of Kansas. Oh, that's right. Yes, mm -hmm. I remember yeah, that. Um, which I'm also not currently practicing, but uh -huh. but I did for a while. I worked on a pediatric unit for several years in Kansas City. Okay. Um, before I moved to Nashville. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, so why why Nashville? I mean, it's sort of obvious. Right, but I yeah. Know well, I mean, so I was um, touring. I was working full-time as a therapist, but then I was touring on the weekends and in, in my free time. Wow. And um, it got to the point where it was like I didn't feel like I could go any farther in Kansas City. Also, I kind of outlived, like, I don't have any family in Kansas City. I, I was kind of ready to make a move. Right. And it was either Chicago or I was thinking about Nashville because I had visited it a couple times and really always loved it and just kind of made the decision that I could always eventually move back to Chicago, but I would regret right. it if I didn't see, yes. if I didn't try out Nashville. Uh -huh. um, and I've been there for almost three years now, and I'm still, still loving it. Okay. It doesn't feel right. like it's been three years. It's kind of flown by. That's good. Yeah. So are you working, you're touring all the time? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I see that you're always mm -hmm. touring. Yeah, yeah, touring, that's full time for sure. Um, and then just doing kind of odds and ends here and there to kind of fill in the gaps and, right. you know, cool pay bills. <laughs> so do you, do you have a, a regular band that you work with or do you hire musicians to tour with you? So I, I am an, an artist where, you know, I, when I play a solo show or a full band, it's, it's, it's my thing. Uh -huh. Um, and so whenever I play with band members, I hire them. Right. Versus, and so like there's two setups. Obviously, there's the band version, like the Beatles, where it's right. equal parts for yeah. everybody. Mm -hmm. And then there's the artist version, like Adele, where she has a right. go to yeah. crew, but it's still her project. Yes. So I do the Adele version. Okay. <laughs> and, um, and so I have, you know, my first call, second call um, crew, uh, but Nashville, everybody plays with so many different people that most shows at this point, it's usually a different setup. But um, you know, I've just kind of found. A, I mean, obviously Nashville has no shortage of great musicians, and right, so of course, um, I kind of just have found some people that I mesh well with, and uh -huh. um, you know, and they're on board with what I'm trying to do, and you know, and I can just send them charts, and they'll do their homework and show up to the gig, and it's great. Right. So that's great. Um, yeah. So I've just kind of found um, people that play with me pretty regularly, but. Um, you know, if they're not free, then I, I have other people that I can call too. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Does yeah. Nashville have a big house band 
system or is it more like a hired guns kind it's, of thing? It's kind of a hired guns. Everybody, okay. everybody, and that's one of the reasons like that people might not be free is because they might be playing for another band, you know, or right. like, you know, God forbid they might be playing with somebody else that can pay them a little bit better, you right. know? And yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's your career, you kind of got to go. Yeah, yeah. That's always the tough yeah, one. Of like, yeah, Yeah. When to, when to duck out of a gig you've committed to. I know. Like, it, yeah, and it's kind of, you know, if somebody... If somebody cancels on you several times in a row, you kind of stop calling them. Right. So, you know, yeah, it, yeah. it's kind of one of those things of like, yes, maybe this other gig pays better, but, you know, do you want to like hurt the relationship of... Yeah, it's, it's just tough. Yeah, it really so, is tough. you know, I don't envy that those decisions for hired guns. <laughs> um, and definitely as an artist, it can be a little exhausting <laughs> trying to always find yeah. people. I have like an actual spreadsheet where for every gig I like have written down who's playing because I can't keep track of it right. on my yeah, own because sure, sure. it's just it varies a lot i mean so. that's good do you do you also gig for money um no. other, other than your own project yeah so i thought about that i thought about like you know finding a cheap base and like playing a couple yeah broadway is kind of the street for that, anybody who's not been to nashville broadway is like the street where it's just a bunch of bars that have just bands in every single yeah, bar and cool. and like those gigs are they're all cover gigs and you have yeah. to like know a lot all of the like 90s rock and country yeah yep. and and i thought about like getting a bass and maybe picking up a couple gigs um but then i'd be spending a lot of time learning other people's music whereas i could be booking more gigs for my own project right so, of course yeah it's, so i kind of decided tough. that it would be better to um even though there's better money and and being a higher yeah, gun it's, uh yeah. it's a little bit more helpful to keep yeah keep doing my own thing Probably keeps you really sharp as a player. Oh like yeah, for sure. Having to do yeah. all these different things. Yeah, I get very up. spoiled for for like if I'm always doing my own thing. I can like if I don't like a chord, I just won't play that chord. Right. I'll just change it. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? yeah, like, yeah. Whereas a hired gun, you're like, no, you have to learn something because you're hired by someone. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah I, it probably would be good for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's different. It's different work. Yeah. yeah, I like. I play in like a lot of pit orchestras <clears throat> for musical theater, mm-hmm. and I really okay. like how sharp it keeps me. As yeah, a for sure. And, yeah. Um, yeah, well, and that's kind of a, another reason I like um, things like this annual show with my brothers. Like, obviously, we're not playing anything too difficult, but it's not just my project. It's the three of us. Right. And so, you know, I do end up playing, like, we we all play our own individual set, but, like, what started to happen is, like, a longer combined set at the end. Right, right. And we kind of all switch instruments. And, um, and so, like, again, it's kind of, I'm not the only one making the decision, so I might be playing something that isn't in my wheelhouse. And right. So it's, you know, another chance for me to like try something new. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's nice. Mm-hmm. Um, so when did you start song? Like, how long have you been songwriting? Um, I, I mean, seriously, uh, it's picked up more since after college. I didn't write a ton of songs in college. In fact, I don't, I don't know that I wrote any. Um, I did write several songs though as like a kid. Like I remember, oh, like like being, a little kid. Yeah, like oh. <laughs> I remember being like a little kid and writing some song. I wish. I wonder if there's like a tape somewhere sitting around. Yeah. And I remember writing a song about like imagining my toys uh, <laughs> coming into life. And then I think That's I wrote great. another like really sad song about me not wanting to be in school and wanting oh. to go home. I oh, know. And I know, right? And um, but then like I didn't do much. I got really like focused because in in high school. In college, I started taking classical lessons and got really focused on um, classical music and opera. And obviously, you do a lot less songwriting. And right. then somewhere in, in in undergrad, I realized that opera wasn't for me. And um, I went to grad school, obviously, still not for performing, but I started to write a lot more. So, okay. so then I, um, I mean, it, it took several years for me to finish the master's, but while I was working... Um, I did that. And then, so finally when I like was done with that degree, um, I was working full time in Kansas city as a therapist, but that Mm -hmm. was when I really was like, okay, now we're going to like really try to perform, you know? And uh, stupidly I was 27, which isn't old, but it's old. Like most people start touring when they're like 20. Yeah. Whereas I was just like, no, I'm going to like get nice and old and then I'm going to start really trying this. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I feel, I feel sort of the same way. Uh, Yeah. You know? And so I'm like, that's the other issue now too, is that I'm still putting it a lot of like, um, like not pay to 
play work, but I'm still breaking into a lot of markets. Yeah. And I have to like be careful, you know, because touring can be tough when you don't have a lot of money. And so like if <laughs> I'm hiring a bunch of 30 year olds, they like need a good solid bed to sleep in, yeah, you know, because sure. it's it's exhausting. It's tough on your you body. you organize all the tour? Mm -hmm, so yeah. Like rooms and everything? Rooms. Wow. Yeah. I hire the guys. I book the rooms. I, mean, I book the tour. It saves money to do it yourself. Yeah. But. You know, I mean, because here's the thing is that like there's just not a lot of money. It's like it's like the 1% of musicians the the Taylor Swifts and, you know, right. they have a lot of money. Yeah. But then like. There's just this large, most musicians, just there's not much money in yeah. it until you've kind of broken through. Right, And right. so, it, you know, That's you have true. to put a lot of work in or you're, you know, if I come yeah. home on a tour and like break even, that'll be a good oh. tour. Yeah. Yeah. And then breaking even by breaking even, I mean the guys get paid, but I might not pay myself. Right. Yeah. Exactly. It's um, so it's so crazy how that is. happens. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a lot of work, but at the same time, I tried everything else. I tried to I have a master's degree and I went and I worked as a professional and it wasn't for me. Yeah. So like on my worst day, I know that this is what I need to be doing. That's good. Yeah. I mean, it's good to learn that rather than thinking, well, should I do? That? Right. I yeah. Know. Yeah. I think that if I, first of all, I don't think I was ready at 20 to just jump into music. I needed, I needed a, some life lessons. Yeah. And, but also if I had started then I might have burnt out and oh, then wondered, Right. Well, maybe I should have gone and gotten a master's or gotten a degree right. and gotten a real yeah, job. Yeah, yeah. And, and now I know that that wasn't for me. Like, I've tried it. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. here we are. So, do you support yourself with music entirely? No. Okay. No, I have a lot of jobs. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Yeah, of course. I mean, every, yeah, all musicians I mean, do. Right, yeah. yeah. So, like, music is full-time and then kind of just extra. I serve tables sometimes. Uh -huh. uh, not very much, but it's um, nice. Like, they're really flexible with... My That's schedule, great. so I, I mean, can just pick up a shift so, every like, once in a while. You need it, and it's exactly, good, yeah. Good um, tips. I, you know, I don't know how long this will last, but I just got my real estate license, so it's kind of a okay. every once in a while I'll sell a house, and that'll kind of get Sweet. me by for a little bit, yeah. Um, and then sometimes I drive for Lyft, <laughs> but okay. not very yeah, often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been doing it. I do DoorDash sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's it's interesting, like the ways that musicians kind of make it work with mm -hmm. all, oh, yeah. all the different things. That yeah, do. I would love to get into some, um, I've been doing a little research on like sync placement and um, kind of finding some funds that way because, you know, if you can write a solid song and get it placed, like that would right. could be really financially mm -hmm. viable. The issue is that it's, networking again right, like everything how do you else get in? It's yeah everything like you is have so to difficult to figure you, out how right to get you have into. to you have to know people and and then that's just a matter of being present in nashville where right. a lot of the industry is mm -hmm. yeah so is it really country centered there i mean there's definitely mainly country and at least for getting your songs picked up by artists yeah. the only genre that's really doing that is country okay. and maybe pop a little bit too but um, like every other genre, the artists themselves are doing the writing. So right. like if you're a songwriter, it doesn't make sense to write a rock song because rock bands aren't picking up other people's right. music. Yeah, They're yeah, writing yeah. their own. Um, so that's why like a lot of the songwriters in Nashville are country because it's the art the country artists that are right. There's pay more them. of yeah. a culture of, yeah, yeah. exactly. And yeah. so, sure. you know, there's, it's not, but it's not like, there's actually a lot of non-country artists in Nashville too and industry. Um, that's uh -huh. just where a lot of the money is. So yeah, yeah mm -hmm. that's what I've heard. It's weird how there's like these centers, mm -hmm. and there's like not much in the rest of the country. Yeah, yeah, like country music is in, in Nashville, like EDM and pop music is in LA. Right. I think there's a lot more Broadway. I mean, there's a lot of music in New New York, but there's definitely a yeah. lot like of you know theater and stuff in New York. And I guess I don't know. I haven't been to New York as much as I'd like to. Yeah, I like New York. I like the scene. I feel like they have. Pretty much everything there. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah, not country. It's big enough. Much, yeah, 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 yeah. Probably a little less country. But uh, yeah, yeah. I like the scene. Um, cool. So what what kind of stuff are you working on now? Are you recording anything? Are you releasing something? Yeah. So I um, I'm kind of in the songwriting cycle where okay. it's like you do the songwriting and then you kind of record, find producers, do all that stuff, and then work on promoting and releasing an uh -huh. album. And so I released an EP in the summer and then obviously, you know, spend some time touring in support of that. Uh -huh. And then I released a single, just a cover single in the fall. And then I'm, I've got actually planned, a, I've got another single cover song being released, um, in January. Okay. 
And so right now, mainly other than that, um, I'm just kind of working on songwriting. So, okay. um, I have like one or two songs. I might play a couple new ones tonight. I'm not sure. Oh, that's fine. Um, and then, but I'm just kind of in the process of like booking a couple co-writes and kind uh-huh. of getting a new album together. And yeah, and I'm still touring a lot. Like you know, I think the big bands, it's like they songwrite, they take a break, and then they tour in support of an yeah, album. Yeah, I guess and then it's hard they... to do this both at the same exactly, time. Exactly, yeah, but yeah. like again, when you're really trying to make it, like you have to. Yeah, yeah. you know, yep. so many people. I mean, social media is a great support, but like in order to make fans, like yep. in order to make 10 new fans, you have to meet 10 new people. Like, there's just no shortcut. So yeah. you have to be on the road. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. Like, getting fans, it's just it's so crazy. much work it's just cr- getting It really those is. Yeah, because, you know, like, a lot of people, you know, it's... Music, obviously, is, like, a stress reliever for most people, but, you know, you don't... So it's a stress reliever, so you don't want to work for it. Right. You know, so you're going to listen to what you're told to listen to, which is on the radio. Yes. So if you're an artist that's not on the radio, like, it almost seems like work for people to find you and listen oh, yeah, to you. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, and, and yeah, so it's figuring out how to, like, make make it easy for people and <laughs> to find yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's tricky. That's tough. Um, do you do... Actually, how do you do marketing then? Is it mostly online? I mean, you don't have to go through everything. It's just like, yeah. do, you, do you do, I mean, I guess touring is sort of marketing mm-hmm. in a yeah, way. Yeah, touring is definitely marketing. And so obviously, yeah. like, you have to be pretty present on social media. Yeah, that's, um, that's the, the tough part is, like, also, though, like, sometimes you feel like you're just, like, throwing a ball. Yeah, I was going to say, social media, for the most part, like, isn't the end-all be-all. Like, in fact, like... I wish I could have a stat in terms of like how many people come to my show because of something they found right. on social media. Um, it's good I for also friends. right, yeah. That's the thing. Is exactly, like your friends and, are going to come anyway. And here's the thing: is that I've, if I, there's been so many times too that maybe I didn't post about a show enough, right. and then I, at some point after the show, somebody in that town yells at me and is like, "Why didn't you post about this?" And it's just like, "Well, I did. You just it yeah. just didn't come across your feed, or yeah, you know, yeah. maybe I didn't post that day." Yeah. Um, but so I also, for, for shows anyway, well, taking a step back. So this past release EP, I worked with a PR firm, um, which, which is expensive, which is what, why selling houses is nice. Um, (laughs) but so that was really great because she helped get a lot of press on in support of that EP. Uh Um, but then I have also started collecting another spreadsheet I have. I have, um, press for every city. Um, that I've stayed at, that I've played in. So like oh, okay. for tonight, for example, I've got press, I've got radio and newspapers and magazines and any other yeah. place that mm-hmm. list events in the Oak Park, Berwyn, Chicago area. Uh-huh. And I, for every show I like put together, I have this template where it's just a press release of like uh-huh. the info on the show and I like a brief info on me and like where to find more information. Yeah. And I put it together um, and I send it out to all of the the press contacts that I have. And, and like the theory is, is that like a lot of magazines and, and, you know, press, they work so fast that like, if you send them something good and it's information they think is viable, they might just print it and not respond to you. Interesting. Yeah. So, um, but like, you know, in this past for, um, press, I guess, releases that I send out for, um, the, show that we've got tonight the chicago tribune actually reached out which is pretty cool that's amazing that's awesome yeah and so we did a little like extra interview um with a lady over there so that was cool um but yeah so i mean it's that's just another way that i market at least my shows like i don't ever know how helpful it is but you know if you're not doing it it's hard to know specifically yeah if you're not doing it then you're definitely missing out yeah um, right. you know, and I, every once in a while I will like, I'll, people will come to a show and they didn't hear, like, they don't know me, but, yeah. and we're out of town, we're not in my market, but they'll be like, oh yeah, I saw that printed and such and mm-hmm. such. And I wouldn't even know, I didn't even know that they ended up getting my email, but it, apparently right. they printed it and it brought that's some great. people. Yeah. Cool. Even if it's just one person, that's one that's more one, than, yeah, exactly. Yeah. One, one more yeah. person. Um, yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, ha- in terms of. Like singer songwriter country things mm-hmm. like that. Do you fit your music somewhere? Like, I mean, in, into into like a genre, like a lineage or a genre. Yeah, or... um, I have been calling it rock soul, which that sounds um, right. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, Americana kind of, but I think Americana is a little more folk than I tend to yeah. be. Yeah, um, banjo player. Yeah, so, right. Yeah. Um, and then I can 
bleed into the blues world. Yeah. Um, but a lot of my originals aren't very bluesy. Or they're bluesy, but they're not traditional right. blues. And there's a lot of traditionalists in the blues world. Um, <laughs> and I, true. they tend to not like me. Um, oh, but, no. <laughs> but that, I mean, really? well, just because I'm not traditional. I see. Um, but that being said, like, I play... Like, the blues circuit is, is a pretty big circuit for me. Like, I, I'm pretty tapped into that circuit. Mm -hmm. And I've played, um, you know, a few blues festivals. And um, cool. usually when I'm in a new market, I'll reach out to the blues society in that area because they're great at supporting music. Yeah. Um, and we do enough, like, blues content that, you know... Uh -huh. Do you change your act a little for oh, that? Yeah, or do you just go sure. headstrong and like, no, what I do is what I, I do. Mean, Fuck I, these guys. I've <laughs> recently been trying to be a little bit more like, okay, no, I'm... What I do is what I do, and if, if it's not for them, then this isn't a good market for me. Because right. recently, like before that, I'd been, like, I, I'll play a blues festival, and I'll be like, okay, we've got to, like, play mainly blues songs. And then I end up not being able to do half of my originals that I oh. love, you know? Right, yeah, yeah. And, and that's not me being true to my art, and that's not what I'm trying to sell either. Right. Um, and so I've been trying to, like, be a little bit more true to myself. Like, it's... You have to you have to play to your mar like your fan base like and definitely show to show I'll yeah. pick and choose different songs right. based on what I yep, think they're yep. gonna like, um, but at the same time I'm also like well no I you know if if I'm not being true to like what I want to play then yeah. I'm not it's not gonna be a good show I don't think you know it's a tough balance it is that like playing to your audience or being your own artist yeah because also I think. If you're pandering to your audience, mm -hmm. it never works. Yeah. It, it comes off as cheap. Right. And people can feel that, I think. Right. Yeah. And then also doing what you do can be playing to your audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that like it's a balance of like uh, playing songs that are true to me, but picking and choosing the right ones. Right. You know, I mean, I've, I'm lucky enough that I've released several albums and EPs. So like the songs that I have that are originals are like it's a wide variety of songs and yeah. so I can like play stuff that's mine and but then still like rotate when I'm playing depending yeah. on who I'm playing to. Um and then that's the other thing too, like going back to hiring people, every time I hire a new person, I warn them ahead of time that I will probably write a set list but not stick to it because it changes uh -huh. depending on who like the what the crowd is responding to. So like you... sometimes the crowd wants to just sit and listen and like cry a little bit and then other times they might want to party and dance yeah. and um and like i'm not gonna just stick to a set list because that's the set list like i'm uh -huh. it we're here to put you know it's entertainment we're here to put on a show yeah so um, do they have to learn a big catalog oh of yeah music? nice yeah oh yeah no i make them work <laughs> yeah good yeah oh hopefully i mean they're 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 good sports everybody i hire and they're um yeah no i'm very grateful <laughs> to find some people that yeah. that are good with putting up with my Crazy, like on the spot, changing a set list. But it's and... good. It means you care about what you're doing. Yeah, you're yeah. I mean, well, and they want to put on a good show too, you know. Yeah. But there are of some course. people who can't, you know, diverge from right. what they're given, and um, and there's that's nothing tough. wrong with that. That's just it probably will mean that uh, it, we're not a good fit together. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel there was like that's hard. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say there was one bass player in particular that I'd hired a couple years ago and in the middle of the set he was pretty old school like uh -huh. he didn't have any of his charts on an iPad he had them like handwritten on different pieces of paper and he didn't bring a music stand so they were on the floor in front of him Ooh. and every song that we played he oh, had to like so get bad. a new right he had to get a new chart out so when I diverged from the set list he had to figure out where that song was and he in the middle of the set and this is like a closed like it was like I would a bit be so mad. He was yeah, he in the middle of this set like I don't remember what he said, but he said something that was like rude in terms of like something like, "Well, that's not the set that you sent me." Like that's not the order. Oh, or like, something like he was back talking talking me about was changing he like the set. Like he was scared. It about was the yeah, game, it was his so own was insecurity. Like yeah, yes, yeah. So it was his own insecurity. And the thing that really sucked was that the way the stage was set up, it was easy to hear the conversations that we were having. So I couldn't say anything to him in the, in the moment. I just haven't hired him since. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't either. Yeah, I mean, and it was just one of those things where it was just like, you're right. I am changing the set. You're right. That sucks. You're right. That I'm asking a lot of you. This is how I do things, and it sounds like yeah. we're not a good fit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
It was tough. It yeah, awful. I know. I also kind of want to be like, look, dude, like, like get you an iPad. Your musicians too. Yeah, like especially I, well, if you're course. working on like taking them on tour and working oh, yeah. out their rooms and I, stuff. Like I that. try to make sure that like if there's a crap place to sleep, that I'm the one sleeping in it, and I do most of the driving for obvious right. reasons. Like if I can, if I have some extra money, I'll try to get like at least buy one meal if you know uh-huh. they're not being provided. Right. Like I do my best to take care of them because I know that like I would love to be paying them more. Yeah. You know, but I just I'm not there yet, and so I respect the fact that they're. Obviously, they're getting paid, but like I respect the fact that they're on tour with me and, um, you know, touring in an SUV with a U-Haul, which isn't comfortable, and you know that's not easy. So no. you know, I understand that we're all kind of we're all kind of just doing it for the love of it to some extent. Yeah, but you got to show up. Yeah. Prepared. Yeah, you, you do. Show yes. Up and know how to do what you need yes. to do. Yes. Yeah. There's yeah. definitely been a lot of people who don't come to shows prepared, and they just don't get a call again. Man. Yeah. Bass players. Yeah, I've, I know. I've been on, it's been the bass players that have been but, the and most trouble so important. with. No, I know. I, I was on a show last year and the bass player got fired and it was just the most like cringy. Like, yeah. Oh. Yeah. There was another guy, a bass player, and he was somebody I worked with. Um, and he came on tour with me. So yeah. it was like a four day tour. So there's four shows and he shows up and like pretty much the entire time we were on the road, um, there was a lot of driving involved, and every right. time he was sleeping in the car, or he would, when we'd stop at a gas station, he'd go get a beer. He never did any like homework, in you know when he when we were right. touring, which is fine. Except then he would show up to the shows and not know his stuff. Yeah, and you like can't, if you if that's how you're gonna be, right, you have to be right exactly. And like yeah. even on the last show, there'd be like something in a particular song that we would correct him and be like, Hey, you know, let's like play it. It goes this way. And yeah. he was still making those mistakes. Like even after we'd gone over stuff Man. and it was like, you just played this three nights in a row and you still don't remember. And you know, and again, like he was, he was a, he was a great guy and like, and I appreciated right. it. It was yeah. a last minute gig that he picked up, but it was just like, all right, dude, got to put in the work. Yeah. You know, like if you want it to be a serious career, you gotta, you gotta do the work. You can't expect people to hire you. I just and feel like be... it makes it more fun. Right. What I don't understand yeah. is why it is, why is it enjoyable to show up at a gig exactly. and like be like at 50% exactly. or whatever. Like yeah, that would make me so anxious. I know. I feel, yeah. I'd feel bad. Yeah. I'd be like, I'm going to get fired. Right. Like, because like, <laughs> I mean, here's the thing is that like, we have a hard time as musicians being taken seriously anyway. Right. Why are you going to give people a reason? Yeah. You know? And it's hard. It's work. It is. It's, it's work. Like, yeah. Like if you want to be paid for this, if you want this to be your career, mm-hmm. you have to show up and you have to put the work in. Right. And like a lot of musicians don't last because they don't see it that way. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's a thing that I, I feel like it's helped me in my life generally. Like if I get a call for a musical and mm-hmm. it's like two weeks, it's yeah. like I have two weeks to learn. Yeah. And it has to be you have basically to do it. perfect by right. the time I show up. Right. So you like, start ho- doing your homework. As and... long as it will take. If it's exactly. an easy show, I look right. at it a couple times. If it's a hard show, I'm going to be shedding for two weeks. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. It's just like. Absolutely. That's yeah. when it needs to happen. Yeah. And not all, not everybody sees it that way. And, you know. Sometimes people get away and it's and it, with it and it's fine and sometimes that career doesn't last very long. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So are you yeah. going on tour sometime soon? Yeah, I mean, you know, I at this point financially, I do a lot of just like shorter tours. I think 4 or 5 days in a row is right. probably the most just because at this point I'm breaking into markets for the most part. Mm-hmm. And you can't draw people on a Monday or Tuesday in a market that you don't know. You know, like if right. it's and if yeah, you yeah. if it's a town you've never played in, people aren't going to go see you on a Monday. Uh-huh. Um and so doing like a long weekend here and there yeah. is the best. The issue is that it's hard like the farther away it is, there's a lot of driving for the first show if it's do you, you know sh- what I mean? Do you try and do the furthest first and then it just depends. Back, just yeah, it just yeah, completely yeah. depends. Like I usually book I'll get one, you know, gig booked and then I'll just start like really focusing on like surrounding it. So it just kind of depends on how it ends up and what the venue has open. And, um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it's obviously I try to make the easiest tour travel schedule, but yeah, it doesn't always work that way. What's your usual venue? Like rock clubs? Um, yeah, it depends. I mean, at this point I kind of tour equally either as a duo or a full band. And so like, obviously if I'm touring as a solo or duo act, yeah. like the venues are going to be a little different. Okay. What's the um, instrumentation of the duo? It, it'll, it, I mean, it depends, but preferably it's me on acoustic and then an electric guitar and preferably somebody who can do some harmonies. 
Next. Yeah. yeah. Right, so two right. guitars, two vocals. Okay. There was one All duo right. tour that I did that was um, me and an acoustic and a drummer. And that was just weird. Like, I'm, I'm a decent guitar player, but, like, I don't solo. So, like, I feel I like see. it got so kind of boring, yeah, you know, yeah. in the end. And, I mean, I liked having the percussion side of it, but, right. you know... It was, Interesting. Yeah, yeah. It was it was less than ideal. Cool. <laughs> but it was fun. Yeah. So do you bring your opera into it? No. Not I mean, really. other than... Has it informed anything? I think... I, yeah, I think that, like... Um, I think that it's helped with, like, the longevity of my career in terms of, like, I know how to take care of my voice right, and I know right. how to sing several three-hour shows in a row. Yeah. Um, I mean, I also know, like... It's also really important to like get sleep and not drink too much and you know stuff like that and not talk too much. Um, tonight will be interesting since last night we had a party for my brother and his you know and <laughs> yeah, like yeah. and so like my voice is definitely a little tired today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but luckily tonight's a pretty quick we get show. that bluesy. Grab I know, right? right? Yeah, it'll be extra bluesy tonight. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like kind of like Janis Joplin. Yeah, yes, Janis Joplin's probably the the most common comparison which is yeah. like at first it kind of offended me because really? she just did so many drugs and like tore up her voice and i was like i'd like to think that i like have more melody than she does because she just to me yeah. she's just all grit it's just all grit you do have more melody than she uh, does. right and so but she, yeah but but i mean she has an amazing soul in her music she I does really yeah she knows she she really is great and like and i don't want to like obviously hate on janice i just for at first i was like <laughs> i don't i mean you know i might do a lot of like allergy drugs and stuff but like i don't really i don't do any do allergy i drink drugs? i know right i don't like drink at all like i i'm i'm not like living a janice life I, why do i sound like her yeah but yeah i mean i do like my whiskey for sure <laughs> Yeah, that's great. My that's Mucinex, great. that's about the heaviest drug I'm into. <laughs> nice. Cool. Well, do you have, so other than tonight, what shows do you have coming up? Um, so January is pretty sparse. I've got a few things in January. Um, I'm kind of recovering in January. I feel like okay, taking yeah. a month off every once in a while is nice. But my next show after this um, will be New Year's Eve in Nashville. Sweet. Um, yeah, and I'm playing at the City Winery, which is really exciting. Okay. Um, it, up in the lounge, it's not in the main stage, but, um, Mark Broussard's playing the main stage. So I'm like, I'm like, hopefully I'll like run into him backstage or something. You know what I mean? Like, like awesome. yeah, awesome yeah. Night. So the, and that also just like the city winery is like a great venue, um, and well known. And so I'm pretty excited about uh -huh. playing that show. Um, uh, but yeah. And then other than that, I've got some, um, I've actually got a lot of like solo duo tours coming up. Um, I think the First one, I've got a couple in February. So uh -huh. like January is pretty slow. And then February I've got I've got a couple is shows a weird in month Yeah, music. it it's, is. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a good time to just like take a break yeah. and like make some money and you know yeah. in other ways. Um but yeah, so then I've got some tour. I'm just kind of in the booking right cool. booking and songwriting mode right yeah. now. Yeah. It's great. It's so new stuff. Yeah. Hoping to get maybe on a like, couple festivals for next summer and cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. thanks for doing this. Yeah. Thanks for fun. having me. This has been yeah. fun. And uh, we'll put all your links in the mm -hmm. description. I don't know if you want to direct anybody anywhere I, in particular. Yeah. I think the easiest place is uh, my website, which is just laurenandersonmusic.com because that'll link to like Instagram and cool. YouTube and all that stuff. Yep. And it'll yeah. all be, all the links will be there. Awesome. We'll make sure. Cool. Sweet. All well, right. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Thanks for listening. Remember to hit that like button, leave a comment if you have any thoughts, and subscribe to my channel. And if you like my content generally, please remember to visit my Patreon page. Thanks. Bye.